In this video, video we'll cover how to calculate the historical versus the parametric VAR and how to do a style analysis. In the spreadsheet, when you load the spreadsheet, go to the tab historical VAR and this tab is actually quite simple. In cells B2 through G2, you type in the allocation that your client started with and then on the row B3 through G3, you type in the portfolio that you're recommending to your client. And then in B4 and B5, you need to put your risk tolerance, which is whatever risk tolerance you select. As we talk in class, most people are between 1% and 5%. I put 1% here. And then you need to state the number of standard deviations that equates with that. Once you have all that set up, pretty much the spreadsheet does everything else and it gives you this table shows you output for your current portfolio and output for the recommended portfolio and it shows you the historical compound return the historical monthly VAR and the parametric VAR and what you're trying to do here is just demonstrate that the historical risk tends to be much higher than the parametric risk I did it two ways I do it in, through the current data through whatever year we're in, but the other one I do it excluding 2008 and following, knowing that markets got more risky in 2008. So that's all you need for the historical VAR. The key here is how you write it up, not so much how you run the Excel, because Excel just needs you to input just a few numbers. For style analysis, you go to the next sheet called style analysis, and in here, what you're going to do is you're going to find a mutual fund that your client is using that you want to test. Here I'm going to use the Vanguard Balance Index Fund. The ticker is VBINX. We'll talk in class about where you might be able to find something like that. But what I'm going to do is go to the internet and then I'm going to go to Yahoo Finance and I'm going to type in that ticker. So again the ticker is VBINX. So I type in VBINX in Yahoo Finance and hit enter and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on historical prices once I get the historical prices I want to get monthly information so I click on monthly and say get prices and once it updates it to monthly, I'm going to go down to the bottom of that page. I'm going to say download to a spreadsheet and open it. And when I do that, I go back to Excel and find that spreadsheet. And here it is. And you'll notice there's several columns that come in. The column we want is the adjusted close because we want it to make adjustments for any dividends that they've paid. So if you highlight the rows we don't, columns we don't need, which is the open, the close, low, I mean open, high, low, close, and volume, highlight those columns, right click, and delete, and then you can click column A and widen it so you can see it. The last thing you need to do is highlight all of this that you have. So highlight the entire thing. And then what you want to do is go data and you want to do it on the sort. You just want to do A to Z so that it sorts it from the earliest date down to the latest date. Then what you want to do is just take that starting price and if you look back on the spreadsheet that we're working with, it starts with June 1996. So you want to find June 1996. And there it is, June 1996. It just happens to be where Vanguard starts, but be careful on that. If your fund starts after June 1996, you need to find another fund. You need a fund that goes back to at least June 1996. I'm now going to highlight that entire column. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm then going to go back to the Portfolio VAR model. I'm going to click on cell B7. I'm going to right click, paste special values, 
and that brings in all my prices and at this point what you'll notice is I'm going to change column B and say it doesn't matter what you start with here you just can type in anything as long as it adds up to 100 percent and you'll notice with that allocation I get an R squared of 97 percent what I'm trying to do is find the allocation up here that gives me the highest R squared so what I'm going to do is again click on data just like we did before and I'm going to do solver just like we did in the previous videos click on solver and it's already set up solver is already set up so all you have to do is click solve and you'll notice it looking for the best answer here it says converge if it says converge click OK and run solver again because again we want it to say found not converge here it says found so we say OK you notice that our R square now is 99 percent which means we can explain the performance in this Vanguard mutual fund. We can explain 99% of its volatility, of its performance, with this allocation up here. So once you have that, you now have your R squared. You'll notice in this particular one, I have a negative number, so I'm actually going to fix that in future solvers so you can't get any negative numbers. Um, but you can do it both ways. You can do it allowing solver to have negative numbers for the allocation, which means you would actually short developed market stocks, or you can prevent it from doing that. In future versions of this, I'm not going to allow it to allocate negative, but I'm going to have solver set up so you don't have to worry about that. But that means with this allocation, you can explain 99% of the performance of Vanguard. And you want your R square to come out in the 90s. If you're getting something well below the 90s percentile, pick another fund to do this analysis on because it's just not a good example so that's how you do style analysis you would then for this fund if you were asking could I use this Vanguard fund in my portfolio you say well you can explain a lot of its performance but that's the allocation does that allocation look like something you could use with what you're recommending with your client if you recommend your client has very little in large cap and you look at this Vanguard fund and it's almost 50 percent large cap then this mutual fund probably is not going to be appropriate for your client and you have to tell them that they're going they will not be able to use this mutual fund however if the allocation you get is close or it can be somehow allocated around with the allocation you're recommending then it would be appropriate